Well, big week. Uh, we're certainly excited about uh, this game. I'd like to maybe give a couple comments on our last game. Uh, it was, I think, the best offensive performance we've had this year. And typically, we've had a hard time with that defense. And so, I thought uh, <clears throat> our offensive coaches came up with a, a great game plan. You know, we had robust practice. We called it Bloody Tuesday. And it was a hard-nosed practice, and that I think uh, paid off, with our, particularly with our offensive linemen up front. Um, you know, we were able to be effective in the running game. I thought we were effective in the passing game. It's great to have Harrison back there. He's a, a big-time threat. I think he had 191 yards. Uh, on defense, it was great to get two takeaways. So we, got, we were plus two in the turnover margin. And the kicking game is also proving to be an X factor for us. I mean, another week where we're blocking, which would be a <clears throat> like a field goal, an extra point, turn it into two points. And uh, there was times during the course of the game I thought our defense was very disruptive. However, there was other times I thought we started a little slow and I thought we finished a little sloppy. So the bookends uh, need to improve this week. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it was great to come up with a, a conference win. And like I said, I think Coach Gonzalez has got that program heading in the right direction. They're better. Uh, they're a more complete football team, and, and uh, we were happy to come up with a win. Uh, this game here, Fresno State is an excellent football team. <clears throat> um, Coach Tedford, once again, has attracted a great quarterback, a lot of weapons offensively. Um, uh, he's got a good group of receivers, uh, particularly um, uh, Jalen Gill, I think, is an outstanding receiver, and they'll also put him in the backfield at times and do some wildcat things. He threw a ball, uh, you know, also. And so um, they're in the top 25, uh, which they deserve to be there. Um, you know, we've got the makings, I think, of a heck of a heck of a football game. And so our players are excited. Our coaches are excited. You know, you get in this time of year. These games are really pivotal. Uh, and every conference game is important, and this one has the makings of even some more, uh, <clears throat> I guess, um, you know, it could really benefit you if you win. If you lose this one, it makes it a little bit tougher if you want to accomplish what we want to accomplish. So this time, questions. Uh, Craig, uh, a lot of guys went down and appeared on the Saturday game. Yeah. Did you report at all? Uh, nothing that's conclusive. I think everybody that went down will be back. We're waiting a little bit on Sebastian Harsh. Uh, he did get an MRI. Uh, it, there wasn't something really concerning, uh, but we wanted to be uh, careful. And so I have not heard the results of that yet. But, yeah, it was a physical game, and guys did go down. Um, but I think we'll have everybody back this week. Yes, Ryan. Craig, uh, you know, with Sebastian out and obviously Brain was out, uh, Tyce Westland and Kevin Shugreen, and these guys are from mm -hmm. small towns in Nebraska and Colorado. How did you find them, and how have they developed? Well, you know, we're a developmental program, <clears throat> and when we recruit, uh, we do things maybe the old school way. You know, we rely on a lot of high school coaches' recommendation, and then we vet, and we watch a lot of tape, uh, get to know them. Uh, you're right, uh, Tice is from a small town in Nebraska. I think he might have played eight-man football. Um, Shoe Green played on the Western Slope out there, so was, they played a lot of meaningful reps and uh, were very productive. And we were, it was great to see them out there, and we needed them. I, I was just going to piggyback off that. What do you think about their performance? They had to play an awful lot on Saturday. Yeah, I thought they played really well, and Tice Tice played particularly uh, disruptive. Um, <clears throat> and they needed to play a lot of reps, uh, too many reps for for my liking. I mean, we were on the field too much, and. So we've got to work on getting off the field uh, on some other times. But, yeah, they were they were certainly helpful. Now, they don't rise to the level of those other three guys. Uh, you know, we're always going to keep on coaching them, but those other three guys I think are pretty special. Greg, uh, Wyatt Eckler was named the Defensive Player of the Week. I mean, that's two weeks in a row you've had somebody out of the secondary with that award. I mean, how, what have you seen out of this mm -hmm. secondary? Yeah, them? well, first of all, uh, noting uh, Wyatt, that was his best game. <clears throat> he played really fast. He was really disruptive. Um, you know, our secondary, Jay Shaw Bell's done a good job along with Benny Boyd. You know, the, the internal core there between uh, Isaac White, Rook Brown, uh, and certainly uh, Wyatt, those are really accomplished players. And, and, you know, they've come up with a lot of big plays. And so, yeah, it's encouraging to see Wyatt get noted 
I like this. Yes, Tracy. What, what's the, the draw to like an undersized running back like, like you got out of uh, Illinois, transferred in from Illinois? What, what do you see in a guy like that that you say, you know, I think this guy? Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about Harrison. He, yeah, actually, he was out of we got him. He was out of Northern Illinois, but he's from Iowa, and we knew his high school coach. Um, we knew a lot about his character, and the other thing too, Tracy. We experienced his speed. Uh, you know, he split us and and flipped the game around, and so we knew what kind of player he was. Not only against us, but I think he rushed for over 200 and some yards against Georgia Tech. Uh, and then the X factor came in to really getting to know his high school coach, uh, the program he's from. Uh, they all spoke volumes about his character because when you bring a guy in, they've got to be able to mesh uh, with the rest of the guys that are in the locker room. And he's been a great addition for us. Uh, you know, he's about 200 pounds. A lot of times, Tracy, we like him a little bit bigger, but his speed is exceptional. And when he gets into that second level, he can split. And so that's something we have not had. And so um, he was a capable pass blocker. Uh, so he's a little undersized. You know, he's not like Brian Hill, but he's uh, probably a step or two faster. Craig, I know uh, Jeff Tedford's known for quarterbacks, but it seems like he has another championship level defense with the pressure they're bringing. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you have more answers for that this year? Oh, we need to. I mean, I tell you, they. We went out to Fresno last year and got taken to the woodshed. It was one of our worst offensive performances, and a lot of it had to do with them. And they had some players that are no longer there, and they've restocked. Uh, they're able to uh, pressure. Uh, they do play uh, gap control stuff, but they have pressure. They'll operate out of three down sometimes, sometimes four down. Their back end is good, um, <clears throat> and it's going to challenge us. And, you know, if you're fighting for the conference championship, you better – you know, I've always I, I, I get, you know, offense scores points and that's important, but you better have a dead good and good defense than Jeff does. Did you think with all the losses Fresno State would maybe take a step back this year? Um, you know, that's what I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once again, I just think, uh, you know, a lot of that is uh, uh, a compliment to Jeff Tedford. I mean, he is a he is a well-respected head football coach that has a lot of connections all over the country and uh, you know, that's a seasoned program, and they play hard. They're gritty. They're explosive. Uh, they're not three yards in a cloud of dust, but on both sides of football, they're they're extremely explosive, and and uh, the record indicates that. You joked last year about exchanging AARP cards at midfield yeah. with Jeff. How has he been so successful as an older coach and such a young man? Um, you know, us older guys, uh, old men rule sometimes. Um, I, you know, I, I think uh, Jeff is, you know, he had some heart issues, and you know, I had called him, really missed him in the league, and we developed, you know, a close friendship before that. Uh, but, you know, I think once he was able to resolve those issues and uh, there was a need for him to come back and stabilize, uh, Kalen had done a great job, but there was a need for to have a steady hand in there, a guy that wasn't going to probably just flip it and go someplace else. I mean, Jeff played there. His son lives there. He knows Fresno inside and out. People know him. And so he's able to leverage that. And then I just think his, his breadth of experience uh, is, is really helped. Craig, so Gunnar Gentry picks up his first catch mm -hmm. in three years this weekend. I mean, what does that kind of say about him and uh, his program, just that resiliency? That you know, he's, he's, he's done it the hard way, and it was not an easy catch that he made. And so um, he's gone through a lot of adversity. He's hung in there. Um, he and I had a really frank conversation about – what his goals were, uh, you know, he had graduated. Uh, for him to take another step and be a contributor, I think, speaks volumes because he's not like playing tons of repetition, but he is contributing. This is uh, the second game you guys have had at home on a, a you know, one of mm -hmm. the old school linear networks, uh, mm -hmm. Fox this time. How big a deal is that to play these teams? Sure. On that stage from yeah, the you know what, that platform changes things. Uh, Perception becomes reality, as people say. I do know from a recruiting perspective, uh, you know, to, to be on uh, Fox or to be on CBS, um, you know, just all the spinoffs, you know, the pregame talks and things like that that you hear. Uh, even the announcers have a, a, a wide breadth. And it has an impact on recruiting. And I think it's an excellent – I, I believe this. 
uh, this game came about. Certainly Fresno is a hot team. Uh, we're playing well. We have a track record of playing well. They've had a track record of playing well. And I think it gives an indication. I know the two, two teams they were looking at was this game and TCU and Iowa State. And they chose this one. And I think it's an indication how Fox views uh, the Mountain West. I think it's a, it's a compliment to our conference. I also think it's a compliment to our conference commissioner. She's done a good job with our TV partners. And so, yeah, this is going to be on a much larger scale, and the viewership's going to go way up. Uh, and that's great. It's great for our, our school, the exposure that the University of Wyoming is going to get. Uh, it's great for our fan base. I, you know what? I encourage our fans. I know it's on Fox. But, boy, uh, you come to War Memorial Stadium right now, the excitement that's out there, it is a rocking place. And I was just talking with Oscar Giles. He goes, Coach, every coach that comes in here like Joey McGuire, he goes, man, Oscar, it's like, it's like there's 80,000 people there. He goes, it's loud. And he didn't know how many people we had. And I just think our fans are, they're not, you know, they're not spectators, they're participants. And so I uh, encourage our fans to, to really come out and, and support our, our football team, and, and you're going to see a heck of a ball game. Greg, how encouraging is it to be 4-1 and one when you guys haven't really played a clean game in all three phases yet? Um, it's encouraging, but we're going to need to play, and that's going to be my message to our team. I, I do think it's an example of the depth of a team. Uh, usually we've won two out of the three phases, and that's been enough to, to win. It wasn't good enough to beat Texas. Um, but, uh, you know, it's encouraging to sometimes not win uh, by style points and be pretty. Uh, certainly the App State game was like that. Uh, and then this last week was like that as well. I mean, we were not on point on defense. And, uh, you know, typically the week before, I don't think we we're on point offensively. And then what happens is guys who are self-starters and competitors realize they got to up their game. Now we got to get all three things in sync. So... Yeah, it's encouraging. I just wish we were uh, playing in, in all three phases. Uh, but, you know, who knows? Saturday's our time. On Saturday, uh, Andrew said that he's still salty over uh, the Fresno State game mm -hmm. last year. It's, a lot of the guys, I think, share that same mentality. It's feeling like kind of a grunge match or a revenge match. How is that um, affecting the team? Well, right it, it was a poor showing uh, on – all, almost all three phases of the game. We got taken in the woodshed. Now, also, we need to frame this. Fresno was playing at an unbelievably high rate. They they went through a stretch where I think they lost three games. They got Hainer back, and they, they knew they were playing for a lot. Uh, we went into their uh, stadium, and, and they threw us out of the saloon. And if your competitors like Andrew is and some of our other players left a bad taste in their mouth, and you know, it's going to have a – we're going to have an opportunity to redeem ourselves. Uh, but to beat this team, we're really going to need to play well. Certainly a m significant uh, improvement over last year uh, to have a chance to win. Craig, Andrew connected with nine different receivers mm -hmm. this week. I mean, how nice is it to just have him yeah. have all these weapons? He, he was – I do think we have more weapons. You know, I, uh, you know, we've always talked about our tight ends. The Trayton Welsh had the big-time catch. John Mike had another catch. Um, you know, you mentioned Gunner. Um, certainly Wyatt Whelan's out there, Ryan Marquez. And then the the addition, uh, Ayer and Devin, I mean, they're good players. And so you just have more weapons. And then along with that, with Harrison, we we just have more firepower than what we've had. We, we don't need to be have everything blocked perfectly or have a busted coverage. We have some guys that can make some plays. And so uh, they're going to need to step up and do that. And then the, uh, the other part is uh, I thought our offensive line really played with a great deal of energy last week, and we'll need to replicate that. I don't know if this has happened in the past because we haven't heard, but how impressed are you with Peasley that, you know, and, and those leaders to have a 15-minute players-only meeting last week? Um, I'm not a big fan of players-only meeting because a lot of times the agenda gets – like, who knows what happens in there. Um, it was an impromptu deal, um, and I didn't hold back and say you can't. I do think it was productive. Oh, yeah, they, these guys are – these guys, when they speak in our captain's meetings, um, <clears throat> the three – well, 
the, the captains, by and large, it's really been an enjoyable group for me to spend time with. Uh, they're understanding, uh, they're mature, uh, they care, and they're, uh, they're very competent. And so their words are backed up by their credibility. Our, our younger players, you know, they're going to look and, okay, some guy may be talking a big game, but if their lifestyle uh, and their attitude doesn't match their words, you know, they're, they're not going to have a lot of credibility. And I think Andrew Peasley is, uh, you know, he's, he's been through a lot and he speaks with a great deal of wisdom and Trayton and uh, Wyatt and Jordan. And, I mean, this is – they're a real special group. And uh, um, so I've enjoyed coaching Cole. Uh, I'm probably – there's one other one on, on defense I should know. Easton, yeah, look at that. There's another guy. So, yeah, it makes my job a lot easier. Greg, you talked obviously about Harrison's running ability, mm -hmm. but just his personality, I mean, how, how fun mm -hmm. is it for his teammates just to be around him with that energy? You know, like I said, bringing a guy in the locker room, uh, you better make sure it's the right fit. And uh, we could tell right away that uh, he was real mature and measured and other-centered. Um, and his attitude was not one of, I want the ball, look at me. Um, and so uh, it's been encouraging and that other players have responded. You know, his background's different. He comes from Africa. Uh, you know, he's a transfer, uh, but he's really bright and engaged, and uh, he has meshed in really well. In all your years of coaching, uh, you've seen a ton of kickers. Anyone as accurate as John Hunt? Um, <clears throat> probably not as accurate. We had, when I was at Nebraska, we had several that had long careers in the NFL. Uh, but John has got ice running through his veins, and it's been so long ago since I worked with those guys. Uh, you know, he's a, like I said, I made that decision. Uh, it was a measured decision when you're calculating, okay, the risk and reward. You look and say, all right, where we're at, how much time, uh, do you, is it worth the risk to go out and potentially have it blocked? Uh, is it worth the risk if he misses? Would we be better served running a play that we couldn't come up with an 11-second play? But I just felt like, you know what, he's money. And his op time is like 1.19. I mean, the operation with the snap and the hold. Um, I, th I think he's hit every field goal this year. You know, I know he's he's on the national map, and so yeah, it's been it's gone from a guy who I didn't know his name against Nevada a couple of years ago to loving him up now. I'm sure your decision would change if Oscar was on the other sideline coaching up. Oh yeah, well, what do they call that Friday night deal? Devon got it again. It was the same thing, and then uh, we had a we had a challenge with Jacory because Jacory got dehydrated and uh, took off and ran. It was hot. So then he couldn't go back in, and that, we are trying to find Jacory at, at uh, uh, halftime. He was in there in the training room. Oscar went in there and jumped his case about, geez, you just run one play and you can't go play anymore? So, yeah, but that's something that Friday night meeting with all the blocks and stuff like that is working. Greg, you your players talk about the 24-hour rule all the mm -hmm. time. I'm interested. Do you have a 24-hour rule uh, for yourself and your coaches? No. It's, it's a lot less than that. But I can tell you uh, when you play an afternoon game, the only time you really relax is after the game. And it takes a while to slow down. Um, and so an afternoon game uh, with a win, uh, you know what? I have a fireplace with my wife. I left on out of here, and I had a Manhattan and a cigar <laughs> and a steak. So that was my – Four hours, and then you get up the next morning, and you're on to the next one. What does it look like if you don't win? Um, it's miserable. You know, but here, here's what, yeah, here's what happens: is once you flip the script, whether you win or lose, uh, you're on to the next opponent, and so that game's behind you. It's certainly a little bit easier to get out of bed in the morning uh, with a win, but. Once you start grinding away, you're into the next opponent. And one of the things that we have, we have an experienced, capable coaching staff, and you have a football team who's emotionally invested. So as a coach, there's a real sense of 
uh, obligation to present them with the best possible game plan that you can to give them guys a chance to win. When you talk about the place kicker, you've allowed him to keep the orange shoes? Uh, I have no say on that. He has orange shoes as long as he keeps on kicking through them. He's a little different. Uh, yeah, Tim Polisek, because what, what's interesting is at the pregame meal, we, uh, I have the, the coaches sit with their groups at the pregame meal. And the pregame meal is a pretty special time. I mean, there's some quietness, and then it builds up to the coaches are going through their last uh, tips and reminders and things like that. So I sat with the specialists, and Tim Polisek said, what the hell do you talk to those guys about? So they're a little bit different. You know, when, he, when he first came here, if I remember right. John? Yeah, mm -hmm. if I remember right, he wound up in the game because of, the place kicker got hurt. Yeah, we had, you know, that was during, it was during COVID. And he couldn't even, he couldn't be around because all the freshmen were uh, quarantined. And I forget what, what, what all transpired is so many years ago, but the next thing you know, we're going out to Nevada, and he just is there. I don't hardly even know who he is, and he's running out there to kick a, a game-tying field goal and singing a rap song. Yep, Sometimes you, you get lucky? Yep, it's better to be lucky than good.